Do you ever just look at the ban list and say, damn, my deck didn't get hit? What's going on, you guys? Uh, Slim here, you already know. The Thunder Dragon channel, the Thunder Dragon enthusiast. Yeah, our deck didn't get hit, you guys. Uh, Y'all already know when I made my ban list re... Well, I guess not reaction, but my ban list uh, review. I was happy as could be realizing that, yeah, my babies didn't get hit at all whatsoever, and that just blew my mind. When I made my predictions, I even said, I think Colossus and Hawk maybe need to go to one to mimic the OCG. Nope, it wasn't in the cards, no pun intended for that to happen, but either way, the deck remained unscathed, and we are still able to play it in this new format. I heard that it just won, a, it won the last regional of the format in Houston, Texas. And that's so amazing. The deck basically that one can you, you know still be piloted in this new format because nothing changed, like nothing changed, and it's crazy. But I know you guys love my Thunder Dragon deck profiles. I did change a couple things up from the previous list you guys have seen. I have been playing the deck back and forth, just trying different ratios, trying different things. It's one of the decks that I keep coming back to and I keep messing with things till I get it just right, or depending on the event. And yeah, we'll get into it. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing. You guys know how much I love this deck, you know, smash that like button i know you guys love my thunder dragon deck profiles and yeah we're gonna get into it new format pretty much the same deck a couple changes shout out to richard you know he's everyone's dad he's my dad he's johnny's dad he's everyone's dad he's the man he was our head judge in dallas and it was an amazing event but yeah we will get into it you guys so this is my i basically am calling this my first version of the new format of thunder because it'll you'll probably see this deck multiple times probably like every month but uh we'll get into it so for our normal summons i am still doing the three and two split of three lupine two solar so i have tried lists with just lupine i have even tried lists with just solar and i keep coming back to wanting to play both because i feel that they both do a lot of different things and everything they do is just great i still feel lupine is superior to solar the only reason i say that is because i'm still not main decking shifter in this build and i'll talk about that when we get to the hand trap selection i feel that lupine is still just so strong being able to just you know you open a thunder with it banishes for cost if they don't add if they don't use a hand trap or anything on it you just get something out of it if it gets destroyed you get a dark back like there's so many things this card does it's a dark for a lure it's just the best normal summon in my opinion and solar isn't without its charm however i feel like solar doesn't do that much because you do normal summon the solar you can send the roar but if you don't have like if you don't have like a hawk or you don't have a way to to duo or a way to really just trigger your thunders in grave i don't feel it does that much however when it goes off it's amazing being able to produce a token is fantastic but at the end of the day i still feel lupine is the superior normal summons i wanted to play three copies of this and two copies of this i felt that five normal summons was the perfect number it's what i've been playing for a while and i definitely would just not change it there were times i thought about playing all six just to see a starter but i just noticed it just wasn't necessary if i do do a shifter build and if you guys do want to see a shifter build you know comment down below i'll definitely show you that too because it will definitely change the deck this card might not even be the in the deck at all if we play if we play it uh that route so let me know if you guys want to see that but yeah those are the normal summons uh nothing has changed there then for our thunder lineup or not even our thunder lineup we'll do the rest of our hand traps so uh we're doing three phantasma three ash and just two copies of nibiru okay so i'll talk about this because I feel like my hand traps are what always changes. So I just really love Phantasmia, and I've talked about this. I felt it was like the best hand trap last format, and I still feel that way. I feel like it just can do so much for you. It can just fix your dead hands. It can put back dead cards. It can make things live that weren't live because you drew the bricks. It, you know, is a dark for a lure. It puts a body on the board, protects your monsters from being targeted. Like it just does so much. I feel like my favorite part of it is it being the body on board because that extra 2400 is so important, and it just does so much. It you know just you can wait at the perfect time to drop it draw so many cards get so much advantage fix your hand get rid of like i said the dead cards and it just does amazing work ash is still the most generic hand trap on earth there's no way around that and originally i was playing three nibiru in the main deck i of course took that idea from europe and from all the other lists we've seen and it was amazing you know so good against Salomon great so good against orcus so good against the decks to just play into it obviously not that good against lunalite orcus because they go as a thought narrowly as a thought but other than that nibiru was just really strong it was one of those cards you wanted to have however in this new format so with orcus getting hit i felt like let me try out just two and see how i like it i feel that this way i'm still playing generic enough uh, hand traps that are just universally good against pretty much everything i know these aren't good against rogue decks and whatnot if we play those decks we play these decks are easy side outs you know our side deck will fix that ash will always still be the most generic card because it's good against just pretty much every deck at some point of the game but i felt that uh 
uh, this lineup, along with I also play three in permanence, is just something that I wanted to have. I wanted what I felt were the best hand traps to play under, um, under I guess, like pretty much every deck, every main deck in the format, because I feel like the format hasn't changed that much. I feel that we're just going to see more Thunder Dragons. We're going to see more, um, you know, people are still going to play Striker. People are still going to play Orgas. They're still going to play what they played last format, just, you know, change some things up. And I think that uh, this is still just a really safe uh, hand trap ratio. I think Salam and Greater are going to see a lot more play. So having this in the main deck, I think, is just really solid. And of course, Phantasmia is great against that deck. So that is the reasoning for that hand trap lineup, along with the impermanence, which we'll see uh, when we get to the traps. But uh, yeah, that hasn't changed that much. And then the thunders are literally the same. Like, I feel like in a pure thunder deck, you really cannot cut any of these cards. I used to think you could, I'll be honest. When I started, I only main decked two copies of this because it was like the worst one to draw. But then I realized like just being able to recycle back duo and the fusion is just so important. And then you just, you know, you max out on all those. And then I finally did up it to two duo. Originally, I think I only ever played one. Uh, I don't know if I ever, if any in any of my list, I profiled this deck a lot lately. I don't know if I ever went up to a second duo, but now I have. And yeah. Yes, if anyone is asking, yes, there was a time I thought about playing a third duo. However, I just couldn't get behind it. I tried, like, and I, you know, I had a lot of games where it worked out, a lot of games where it bricked, and I just noticed two was the right number. The follow-up play with it is just so strong. Being able to search it off fusion, being able to search it off dark to just finish the game in that turn is ridiculous. The fact that it's level eight is super important, and that was the main reason I wanted to think about playing three, and you guys will see that when I get to my extra deck, but I felt that I want to keep it like this. Uh, I'll probably still go back and forth and test with a third copy just to see but uh, for the most part i felt two just got the job done perfectly so that's why i didn't change it and none of these need explanation i think anymore you guys should know what all of these do by now you just need to max out on these because you want to see them with uh you want to see them with your olive blue pine and everything else and just you know get your thunder cards rolling so that's it for all the monsters now to the spells of course, three allure. I mean, this card is just, I mean, this card is bonkers. This card is pot of greed in this deck. I don't know any other deck that gets a pot of greed. I know Orcas have Orchestrated Return. I mean, this is like our version of that. Like, and then we get a mon we get a, a dark or a, a, a roar trigger, which is just ridiculous. And this is something that I have gone back and forth on endless times, you guys. Those of you that have seen these profiles, you know. And it's taken me a really long time to get behind this. And it is two copies of Desires. So I have played this card before. And I'll tell you, it is literally... I love Desires. I love Pot of Desires. I think it's one of the best cards ever printed in the game because it is a plus one. Being able to draw cards is amazing. And it's taken me a long time to get behind this card. And I think what took me so long is to realize that back in the day when I played Blue Eyes, everything was at three. You could play three Desires. You didn't care. You never banished enough engine pieces. And it's pretty much the same mentality with this deck. You play so many three ofs that your banished pile should never be bad. You should always, always be able to sculpt your hand before you Desires and then draw into better cards. Helps you see your side deck cards this card is amazing and yes it is a high risk high reward it's always like that because while you would think your banished piles aren't going to be that bad sometimes you're going to have those games where they are pretty bad but if you play the card properly if you you know do all your searching first do all your deck thinning first then the desires can be really strong sometimes you have to blind desires and you know sometimes that's the name of the game every deck has done it and i feel that it would be a disservice to not play this card because getting that plus one is so important and just being able to get more cards in your hand and get more advantage and outpace your opponent is just so important so that is why right now I'm playing two copies. You don't have to play it if you don't want to. Uh, it's taken me a while to get behind it, but in testing so far, the card has been quite—it has been quite effective. It's been very strong, being able to help me see more cards, more hand traps, more answers to what my opponent uh, puts out, and I just really like it. So that's what we're doing right now. Of course, the two copies of Fusion. I have thought about playing three. I know a lot of people are going to say that. Um, the one thing I was noticing though when I did play three is I would, you know, I would kind of dead draw it early in the game. That's not a real reason to not play three, but I feel that like with Desires, two is definitely correct. I would never play just one. So this is one of the strongest cards in the deck. Uh, again, it, I probably could see myself going to three copies of this. It just really depends. I think that this card is just, I think people don't give this card enough credit. This card is like definitely one of the best cards in the deck. Like Titan is so strong, being able to hard make a, a Colossus if your hand just kind of sucks and you just open regular Thunder Dragon, you can at least make a Colossus search them back out you know thin your deck again and then you have this follow-up play the follow-up players will make this card broken like this card it's follow-up play is just there it's next to none i absolutely love it and then of course the one gold star because i mean this is like the, like the the overpowered one of in the deck and then the already mentioned three impermanence so i played three impermanence along with all my other hand traps it's just the best one to have if you're if luna light orcus is still a deck or any deck that plays naira allows i thought you can still play this card you impermanence at the right time you can just win the game so it's just so strong it's just really good in the mirror match too like the thing is the mirror match is going to be a huge thing now because the deck is pretty much budget if you because if you notice my deck is like one of the original like the original cards because i never you know i got it in the beginning and i didn't get any of the reprints or anything but um 
yeah, this is just really good in the mirror. Being able to turn off Colossus and Titan is huge. Being able to clear the board in the mirror match is huge. So this card just blankets against the, against the mirror match in a lot of matches in the format. So I think it's just really important to play it. So, yeah, so that's the main deck. I believe it's 41 cards. Uh, of course, Richard, you're the best. Uh, extra deck real quick. I, like I said, I, I don't, I'm going a little in-depth with certain choices, but uh, when it comes to the extra deck, I'm pretty sure it's pretty standard. But I play all six, three Colossus, three Titan. It's the name of the deck. Uh, Colossus is still insane. Titan is still insane. There's no reason not to max out on these. They're just super important. Uh, they're how you have your grind game, and that's what I like about this deck. The grind game with the deck is nuts. Our link monsters, we play one Link Karibo, one uh, Beat Cop, one Some Summoner, one Phoenix, one Unicorn, one BLS Link, and one Bore load. So the only one I think that is changed in here, the only one that needs explanation is Beat Cop. So for the longest time, you guys have seen the profile, it was Lambda. And you guys are wondering, Slim, why did you switch to Beat Cop? So one thing I noticed is a lot of players were switching to Beat Cop. And I wasn't sure at first until I, you know, used some common sense, you know, of course, read my cards and then realized that you are going to get in those situations where you have the Nibiru token or, you know, something and you need to be able to push, you know, past that token. Like say they give you a really weak token and say you need to, you know, keep going. You you can't make lambda with it beat cop you can it only takes two monsters and i know you guys could say play land Phonicus. i do like the fact that you know beat cop is a dark sometimes it does come up uh you could play that or land Phonicus, but i like this because it is an effect monster and it does help you uh, link climb into bore load in the mirror match because land Phonicus doesn't work since it's a, a vanilla so i know it's really niche situations but trust me those situations come up and you'd better be safe than sorry that's all i can say like it's just better i think to play the beat cop just for those token situations just for the situations where you know you need to link climb and you couldn't if you were playing lambda so i just wanted to be uh like i said better safe than sorry everything else here is super generic super important i think you need to play all these cards you need this for the mirror match especially now i feel like the deck is going to see a higher representation so you definitely should play Boro Load for the mirror and of course you guys know how much i love this card i told you guys to invest in that card it's definitely uh worth the money and then the big difference from uh the deck is that i'm playing two rank eights so i'm playing dingirsu and and uh, Sanifon. So both these cards are insane. Uh, Dingirsu is just in... Like, I know why Orcus players love Orcus. Like, this card is just insane. I summon this card so much, and it just spins away a Colossus in the mirror match. It spins away any card, and it's just huge, and it has protection. Like, it, it, this card is insane. And then this card is just game against uh, Salad. It's game against uh, Orcus after you clear their board. You know, it, you know, it's just so good being able to turn off Ray. All those things. Like, there's all these little niche interactions with these cards, but they're amazing, and I definitely would not uh, play the deck without them. We do play so many level 8s in the, you know, the duos, in the colossus like we're able to you know do that we you know we can link you know make these you know you can recycle those monsters with like roar and stuff like that and fusion so making these cards is actually easier uh, than i originally thought so i think these cards are just really good they're good to have in but in multiple situations and i think out of the rank age you can play these are the best ones but yeah uh that's it you guys that's the deck uh i didn't want to keep the profile ridiculously long you guys have seen this deck endless times but i want to know your guys's opinion this is just version one so i know there's definitely uh, room for improvement but i really do like this deck you guys know this one of my favorite decks if not probably my favorite deck in the last couple of years like i just i love it to death like i can't put it down i like literally cannot put this deck down and uh, clearly konami doesn't want me to put it down because they're not hitting anything on the on the on the list so it's fantastic but i like to know your guys' thoughts again this is just version one uh, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Again, if you guys want to see the shifter build, let me know. I'll definitely uh, profile that, and we can talk about that in depth as well as another version of Thunder you guys can play. And of course, as always, if you guys are trying to build this deck, please use my TCG Player link. Uh, it's down in the description below. It's a kickback to the channel. It helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. I'd love to see you guys build your own Thunder Dragon deck. It's budget, you guys. It's really budget. Like, I know some of these cards are expensive. I know you guys are going to say Man says it's budget, then shows Phantasmes. Again, I've talked about cards like this in Impermanence and BLS Link and all these expensive cards these are cards that i feel that should have been invested in since day one and you know you learn uh from things like that i feel like cards that really shape a format are really important to have and again whenever a tcg player has the kickback on stuff like you can make yourself some money back so there's always that too so remember that like there's always ways to get the cards you need but yeah uh this is just version one i would love to know your guys's thoughts uh again uh thunder dragons you guys <laughs> they're here to stay for another format and i can't wait they said the next list is until january so yeah we got a whole nother format of this deck and i can't wait uh to see uh, how it does and how it shapes up in the meta but yeah those are my thoughts i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys next time thank you for watching